Is there advice you can give yeah. to people that, to uh, young girls and boys dreaming somewhere in Africa of yes. how to change the world? That's right. And by the way, I want to say there are bigger beacons, there are better beacons than me. I just happen to be someone who has the chance of talking to you right now. Uh, and one of my goals is to open the same doors that were open for me because together, our voice, there's such amazing stories out there. And um, so bigger beacons, better beacons out there. One thing here for me, the reason why I do what I'm doing right now, and it's almost to the point of self-destructing my own health, I feel invested with such the mission of I have been afforded the truth, so it is my moral duty to try to take it around. I know I sound, people sometimes say, when I listen to you, I feel like I'm, I'm talking to a, to a priest. And I'm like, because the gospel, <laughs> I received the gospel. So anyway, but the thing is, Lex, who tells you these things to this day? When they talk about the poverty of Africa, what do they talk about? They're sitting there and telling you, oh yeah, it's because of colonialism, it's because of racism, it's because of imperialism, it's because they're stealing, you know, raw material, blah, blah, blah. Is is any of those, culp you know, like um, guilty to some level of where we are today? Uh, one of, maybe part of a reason where we are today? Maybe, maybe. Is that the only reason or the overwhelming reasons? No. Is that unsurmountable? Absolutely not. So for me, don't stay in that place of um, that steals and robs you of your agency. So, so I think it's important for people to A, get the right diagnosis as to why we are where we are. Because what you and I just talked about, the mainstream does not talk about this when they even talk about it. Africa in terms that, you know, are not the usual suspect of, oh, famine is building over there, war is building over here, oh, we're having Ebola is coming, all of that stuff. Even when they were talking about the monkeypox, which at first, you know, um, in this wave, it started with white people in Europe. Well, even in the many newspapers you pull out, it's black people with monkeypox on their, on, on their skin. I'm like, wait a second, this time around, we, it did not start with us. So why are, we, are you always showing us when it's right now happening to white people? You know, yeah. um, so so all of that is happening. So for me, the thing is, we, the world simply right now, does not have the right diagnosis as to why this continent right now, despite all of its riches, because Lord knows it's got riches, starting with its young population. 75% of the population in my country is below the age of 25 years old. So when we're talking, I know we're talking about, you know, Repopulation, you know, is, is important. We're going to have to go for that. Maybe you'll get me going about climate change. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, um, so here my point is, A, we need the right diagnosis as to why this continent is the poorest continent in the world, despite its riches starting with its young people, all the natural resources, diversity in land, people, cultures, languages, everything that make that make for great ingredient for for awesomeness. Yeah. Despite all of that, we are the poorest region in the world. People need to know that the reason why that is, it's because we also happen to be the most over-regulated over region in the world. At the end of the day, what Africa, as and I dare to say Africa here, and treated as one, we are 54 countries, 55 depending on how you count, yet we almost, for a tiny minority of these countries, we almost all lack one of the most crucial freedoms that there are. If you are serious about prosperity building, we lack economic freedom. And economic freedom is the thing that unlocks that human potential of yes. the young people. Just Yes. For the them to run, to run with their ideas, to start businesses, or to start initiative. It doesn't have to be for profit all the time, right? But it is, it is, it is this, this, this thing that gets you to get up and go and do something criticized by creating. Young people are naturally wired to want to criticize by creating. They're not sitting around waiting or complaining usually, yeah. unless you put them in a tiny box and they have no other way to go. Yeah. And in this situation, what they do, you know, let's talk about pre-colonial Africa. Of forefathers before slavery ever happened, there were black people in the con on the continent. You see, when we talk about the story of black people and Africans, Africans, you know, black people in Africa, for most of us, even me, 
I noticed that unconsciously it starts with slavery. But you're like, no, we were there before, before white men ever set foot. Who were we? What were we doing in our diversity? Um, what um, economic systems were we running on? Um, and then you realize that for most of them, they were free marketeers and they were very much on the free trade, on the free uh, enterprise side. So even that is a reinforcement. This is a place where we do not understand our um, history. So proper diagnosis, Africa is the poorest region in the world because it happens to be the most overregulated uh, region in the world, lacks economic freedom. Number two, what do we do about that? We got to become serious about reforms, economic reforms, so that um, we can become beacons of uh, um, free markets. Just like the Asian tigers, that's what the Asian tigers did. They had to become serious. Singapore, Taiwan, you know, uh, South Korea, those guys had to become serious about the free markets. Lee Kuan Wu, you know, when, uh, you know, he's just like, we got to do something. And he looked around and he realized at some point, we got to make these reforms. And he went on to that journey of reforms, making his country one of the most free market, you know, countries in the world. And voila, the magic happened. Back in the, you know, in the 30s, the stock market crash and the Great Depression and everything, the world's and with all the lies that were told uh, to to the world coming from the Soviet Union, Stalin, to, um, while they were starving and dying over there, but oh no, you know, I mean, Durante was telling the world that uh, oh no, no, everything is going well, nobody's dying when we know now, and getting Pulitzer prizes based on this stuff. But then the world went on believing that oh no, um, capitalism failed. This is this 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 um, you know um, crash that you had in the in the in, in the stock market is proof. This is what late stage capitalism produces. You guys always have your big ups and downs. And by that time, it was so hard on people that they're like, we're done with this. And at the same time, we're told the lies coming out of the Soviet Union that supposedly the communism was doing just fine. And at that, you're at the point where the free market concept almost died. And it's the, you know, the, the, the Asian tigers who kind of helped, you know, bring that idea back to life, right? Uh, their success having used the free markets. And so for me, we got to have, we got to make a, re a new commitment to the free markets on this continent if we want to go anywhere, if we want to go anywhere. And the timing is perfect because the young people, there's a, there is a kind of freedom for the revolutionary free markets in mm -hmm. this whole space. Exactly. And by the way, you said something, oh, Say that again, because I want to tell you what I'm hearing in that. Because something's really cool. <laughs> Say it again. Come on, Lex. I don't know which part. You said English is my second language too. <laughs> no, you said you said there's something revolutionary. Yeah. In 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 that, because you know how young people are attached to a revolution and how, you know. Oh, yeah. I understand. Look, look, Lex. I understand, and I am willing to give the benefits of the doubt to some of these socialists who cut who came to it because they had to witness some of the horrors of, you know, of their times, you know. There's a revolutionary Engels, spirit behind that. It's ultimately yeah. uh, uh, criticized by creators. Exactly, exactly. But violent revolution is never the answer. But that's what they went for in 1789 in France, you know, the French Revolution. Um, and then, they, and you know, Marx and Engels, you know, they're promoting these ideas that usually for them justifies violent revolution. Lenin, all of these people, the... the I am with them when they say that they want um, to see equal rights for people. Of course, I don't agree with their, therefore, we need to push for equal outcomes. Yeah. Equal rights is right, but equal outcomes is not right. So, but I am with them for all the way to equal rights, but this is where the two paths go this way. And also their, their, their none, the fact that they have no issue with violent revolution, people get killed, uh, you know, people get put in gulags and people get, that's not right. So what you just said here just gives me goosebumps because there is revolution in the free markets, but that's the type of revolution we want. The revolution that comes from people creating, criticizing by creating, it's one of the best forms of revolution. If you ask me, that's the most sexy way of revolution. Yeah. Criticize by creating. Yeah. But what, you're going to go shoot people or be like, uh, what's his name? Um, the Che Guevara, who tells you, I love, it's in writing, I love nothing more than to fry the, 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 the brain of a man with his gun? Really? Well, in terms of sexy, uh, there is power in that message of the oppressor, the abuser, the enemy that has abused their power. 
they need to be destroyed. And there's power in that in the message of that violence. Unfortunately, the lessons of history show that the violence um, one doesn't work, but it, it does. It does the following. There is something about human nature, as the old cliche goes, that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Is the people who are in charge of committing that violence? It does something to their head. The first person you kill, the second person you kill, for some reason you lose your ability, the compassion for other humans. Even if you began as a revolutionary, as the Soviets did, fighting for the worker, for the for the rights and the um, the basic humanity of the people that really do the work, uh, you lose you lose the plot somehow because of the violence. So in that way, it seems like the lesson, at least of this part of the human history, until the robots take over, is that the economic um, freedom, free markets, and protecting those and allowing the anyone from your country to dream and to make that dream a reality by creating it with as few uh, sort of uh, roadblocks as possible. Exactly. So, so that's why for me, the message is very clear is what we talked about today. The reason why Africa is the poorest region in the world is because it happens to be the most overregulated um, region in the world. And for some f people who might be, you know, uh, put off by it because they're like, oh, she's talking about laissez faire. No. Let me put it maybe in a way that you can understand. Do you think that? It should be as easy for any person in Africa, for any entrepreneur in Africa to enterprise, than it is for any person in Scandinavia to enterprise. If your answer is yes, which I would hope it is, then you have a moral obligation to work with me to make my country and as a whole my continent more free markets. It's that simple. At that point, there's no like, yes, but on the other hand, uh-uh, no. And for me, on that question, and I've yet have to find somebody who claims to say no. If you say no, then we have a whole other problem. I'm not even talking to you at that point anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so just to clarify, uh, you know, th there's a perception in, uh, in some reality that the Scandinavian countries have elements of socialism in their politics, in their society, in their even in their economics. So, at the very least, uh, Africa should have, in terms of economic indices should be as free as the Scandinavian countries. You're just giving that as example. Economically free, yes. Yeah. Because see, the Scandinavian, they do have a, um, a, um, a subsidized, you know, like a welfare system. That's what, a more socialized welfare system. But the way they make their money is very, very much the way of the free markets. So there is how you make your money. And then there's how you maybe decide as a, as a, as a, as a country to redistribute it, right? And so... Even there, even in the, in the, in, the, in Scandinavia, um, again, yes, they have more economic freedom. So then from there, Lex, where we go is my job and my goal is for every single African, young and old, to know what I have come to learn. We are not doomed. Um, it's not over for us. We will never catch up. The time for catch up is, is gone. But guess what? We've got a strong, strong possibility and chance to leapfrog. And leapfrog we will. It is still time. But for that to happen, like I said, we need to know what we just talked about today because that is not what the mainstream keeps us abreast with. When you go to the World Bank, they don't necessarily work along these lines. They're still... It's, it's not... When you go to universities, um, I will ask you, MIT, the MIT Econ Department, or even some of, most of the professors, are they free market oriented? We find that oftentimes in academia, there, there is a strong anti-capitalist bias. There is a strong anti-free market bias. So this is a problem. This is a problem. Nobody cares about the economists anyway. <laughs> yeah. wanna, so we move I forward. Wanna... Uh, in MIT, the spirit of the entrepreneur burns bright, not in the economics department because they just write op-ed articles, but in the dreamers, the young undergrads that actually build something. No, I get that. But then we cannot be stifling their efforts yes. by putting these artificially made 
regulations and laws that stand in the way and clip their wings. So, so that's why when you were saying, what, do you, what advice do you give to them? The advice I give to them is each one of them, they have to pay attention to this, to this discourse we just had. I don't ask anybody to agree with me on face value. Go back, do like I had to do. I come very much from the left of the left, if you can believe that. But I had to have my own intellectual journey. And in this case, my intellectual journey was very much complemented by my own life. Having to build these companies on two separate continents and having to, I was, I had front row seat of the differences. At first, I thought it was this way just because we're poor and therefore we messed up. And therefore, it's like this. But eventually, I learned that, no, we're poor because we lack economic freedom. And if a country allows its citizens the economic freedom to enterprise, then they become rich. So I had it upside down, you see. And so it's important for people to know that. So number one, know your facts. Because your facts will empower you. In this case, I like to use that word. Facts will empower you and they will even furthermore, they will power you. Empower and power you. Because empower is like inside and power is like I push you mm -hmm. forward and up. So that's what it does to know the facts. And then go on and look around you. Where are the best practices of this? Who is at the cutting edge of a free market? Where it's done in a way there, people don't necessarily be left behind or anything like that. We, we're in 2022, for Christ's sake. We don't have to do entrepreneurship the same way maybe it was done 50 years ago, 100 years ago, when as a community, as a people, we were maybe less enlightened because of our times, mm -hmm. right? We can, we can update this thing. And move forward, but update is definitely not uh, build back, uh, build back. Uh, what do they call it? Build back new or whatever they're calling it. <laughs> the WF, yeah. you know, like whatever, whatever nonsense and you know stuff they're smoking over there. Yeah. It's not that. Where there are some principles that are universal, and that stand the test of time. Those we have to keep, and on top add the new, new things we learn from from our times and from life. So that's what I want them to know: learn new facts, be empowered, empowered. And then look around, think about the, and look to see where the best practices are around the world, because the world is yours. You might be African, but the world is yours. So stop this nonsense of, oh, well, it's done by white people, so we're not going to do it. Get the best that exists in humanity for what you're trying to solve. And on top of that, put your own twist, right? Bitcoin is all of ours to take. Bitcoin is not the white man's thing, so therefore, oh, come on, you know, because, you know, we have a misguided pride. We're not going to use Bitcoin because it's white man's stuff. Bitcoin is math, you idiot. Math is universal, so it belongs to all of us. There's no color. We, exactly. In, so, in, uh, in the space of economics. Yeah, in the space, in the space of, of ideas. Economic ideas. Take, and there's a chance to leapfrog, too. Exactly. Which is really, really powerful. Exactly. Because here we will leapfrog. And Lex, I'm not crazy. This is, this is going to happen. You mark my words. But it's going to happen if as many people hear what we're talking about today. Because at some point, the solution is not going to come. It's not me. It's not. It's going to come from the wisdom of a crowd. This is why I love the crowd. There's no better wisdom than the crowd. And that's also why I believe in the free markets. This concept of emergent order. There's no way. There's no central planning that is smart enough, that has the level of intel that street level people have trying to create something. It's just, we just have to be humble. There's just something at the bottom of a pyramid that just bubbles up and happens. They're the best. I think the cynicism, the idea that people are dumb is at the core of uh, a lot of things that uh, prevent the flourishing of society. You know, this kind of anecdotally, people are like, ah, everyone is stupid. And people say that jokingly. But the reality is people are incredible. They have the capacity for kindness, for love, for innovation, for brilliance yes. in all kinds of dimensions. You might be, you might suck at math, but you, you might be amazing at carpentry. You have to find that thing. And there's something about when there's a freedom to find that thing and people interact and get excited about shit together and then they, they build. It's, if you look at authoritarian, at, at places that limit that freedom, at the core, I think, mm -hmm. is the idea that people are dumb. Let us take care of everything. We'll come up with the rules and the regulations because people are too dumb to manage things themselves. And that, and then that idea builds builds on top of itself where you think that 
they're, the entire populace is much lesser than the, the wise sages sitting at the top. Then you add violence on top of that, and that leads to corruption, and uh, to corrupting of just the human mind of the leaders. And mm -hmm. the whole thing is uh, uh, becomes a giant mess. The antidote to that is economic freedom. For people to have a freedom to enterprise. And um, look, um, Lex, when we allow for that to happen, have you looked around lately and look at the level of um, niche that has happened in this country? I mean, you have clubs where you you have places where people are into guitar strings. You know, like some of the, like it's it's all about guitar Beautiful. strings, and others it's all about these best cupcakes, and yeah. others it's all about this this new crypto thing over here, and others like hair, best you know weight. It's when you allow us because. Seven billion geniuses. Each one of us, I believe, came to this world with something, something that only he or her possesses. And that is the genius, and it is their contribution to the human problem. 